All right, good afternoon. How's everybody doing out there? Okay, so this video is gonna be titled, Are We Grafted In? And I'm referring to Romans chapter 11. Okay, so when you come into Romans chapter nine through 11, there's an emphasis in Romans chapter nine and it's Israel's past election. In chapter 10, it's concerning their present rejection. And in Romans chapter 11, it's concerning their future salvation. All right, so you have to come to that understanding when you, when you start reading through those three chapters. Okay, um, so let's answer this right off the bat and then get into the study. So Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time, in time past, Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So we're not grafted into Israel. Israel is fallen, fallen and enemies of God currently as a nation. That's Romans chapter 11. Verses 11 and 28. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, Paul says, For the, the wrath of God is come upon them to the, up, to the uttermost. So what, is, what advantage is there in being grafted into a nation that God does not acknowledge at all? It is nonsense. Is it really a privilege to be in a nation that God's wrath has fallen upon, which wrath caused that nation to fall? Of course not. Okay, so Paul goes into explanation about Israel's temporary fall leading to eventually being saved in the ages to come and who will go into God's earthly kingdom. So there is a distinction in the Bible between unbelieving Israel and the believing Israel God. There was a remnant that did believe, but Israel as a whole fell. And God set them aside as a whole, a nation. So national Israel will have a future salvation. So let's take a look at uh, Romans chapter 11, verses 16 and 17 real quick, because we need to establish what the olive tree is and who the audience is and what is the doctrine. Okay, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Verse 17, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. So let's take a let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 16. I'm not going to read it just for sake of time, but I'm going to pull out some, um, you know, where this olive tree is being talked about, uh, you know, in prophecy. Green olive tree. Branches broken and house of Israel. Now, let's take a look at Psalm chapter 52, verse 8. Green olive tree again, house of God. So, where was that house of God? Yeah, you got it, Israel. Okay, now flip on over to Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. I'm gonna we'll go ahead and read those to you real quick. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Verse 2. Take with you the words and turn, turn unto the Lord. Say unto them, unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously so we will render the calves of our lips. Verse 3. Asher, or Asher, shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses, neither will we say, any more to the work of our hands, ye are our, our gods. For in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. Verse 4, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. Verse 5, I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. So we see that the olive tree... It's pretty clear in scripture represents the kingdom of Israel and their dominion in the earth. If you read Genesis chapter 20, 
7, verses 26 through 29, and I'm not going to read them just for sake of time, but go read them. According to this dominion, Israel's blessings are earthly. Our blessings are heavenly. We have nothing to do with the earth. What about verses 39 through 40 in that same chapter, Genesis 27? Go read those as well. Yep, once again, this is the representation of the kingdom and dominion. All right, after you read that, go flip on over to 1 Kings chapter 6, verses 31 to 32, and read those verses. These doors being talked about here was the entrance of blessing, and those doors were what? Yep, you got it, the olive tree. So, now we'll take a look at Judges chapter 9, verses 8 to 13. I'll read those verses for you real quick. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they say unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? All right. So now we understand who the olive tree is, correct? Yep. Once again, it's Israel. Okay, so now let's figure out who the Gentile is in Romans chapter 11. Is there a believing and an unbelieving Israel? There sure is. So why in the world does the word Gentiles in Romans chapter 11 have to mean the body of Christ? Well, let's figure it out. Let me ask you this. In the body of Christ, are there any Gentiles or Jews, or are we all one? Exactly. It's that simple. So, what I believe is Paul is dealing with Gentiles in the flesh because he is clearly dealing with Israel in the flesh. Verse 14 of Romans chapter 11. So, if you read Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, and I'm not going to read them just for sake of time. This is clearly a Gentile that loved Israel, the centurion here. And Paul's not saved yet and nowhere in the picture. So now flip on over to Acts chapter 10, <clears throat> verse, verses 1 to 2. And this is clearly another Gentile that feared God. He prayed always. So was Peter the minister of Gentiles or was Paul? Who was Cornelius? Well, he was a Gentile. So you had Peter going to a Gentile that had knowledge. Now go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 10. And you read there, I'm not going to read it just for sake of time, but I pulled this out. Jews and proselytes. So these proselytes were Gentiles. They joined themselves to a religion. They didn't become a Jew. They became as a Jew. So are you starting to see who's grafting in? So let's take a look at the Gentiles who did not get grafted into Israel that Paul goes to in Acts chapter 19, verses 24 to 28. These are heathen Gentiles whose goddess was Diana. Cornelius wasn't praying to Diana, and the silversmith in Acts chapter 7 wasn't praying to Diana. So these folks were worshiping an idol god. They, they turn... Um, what do I got right here? Yeah, these folks were worshiping an idol god. They turned from the Jews, right? It's obvious that the audience in Romans chapter 11 that's made up of Jew and Gentile and Paul's speaking to those Gentiles that were grafted into this olive tree about the fall of Israel, and they needed to be careful not to boast against the natural branches because if they were going to go into unbelief, they could be cut off also. So I believe these Gentiles and Romans are not the Ephesus Gentiles at all, period. These Gentiles had kingdom knowledge through Israel only and were grafted into that olive tree. So how is Paul referring to these people in Romans chapter 11? He clearly refers to these people as after the flesh. Then you flip over to Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 28. And he says there's no difference because we are all one in Christ after we get saved, not grafted into Israel's tree, period. The body of Christ is totally 100% separate from Israel. We are not Israel in any way. We are a new creature. 
If you get this solidified in your mind, then you will start to understand Romans chapter 11. Now we need to understand the doctrine of Romans 11. So let's read verses 18 through 19. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. So what branches were broken off there? Unbelieving Israel. Because of them being broken off the olive tree, it allowed the Gentiles to be grafted into that same tree. They were broken off because of unbelief. Look at verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Okay, so let's dig into that word fear real quick. Let's flip on over to Acts chapter 10, verse 35 and read that. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. I have a question for you. Is this doctrine to the body of Christ? Absolutely not. We have been made accepted in the beloved. Hey, unbelieving Israel got cut off from the kingdom. If they do not believe, they shall be cut off. And so, and so did the Gentiles. And so do these Gentiles in Romans chapter 11. So let's take a look at what Paul says, um, what, what he tells us as members of Christ's body. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, Paul clearly tells us that ye have not received the spirit, spirit of bondage again to fear because we have received the spirit of adoption. So next question. So what are they to fear in Romans chapter 11, verse 21? For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Is this your doctrine as a member of the body of Christ? Absolutely, without a doubt, no. So let's flip on over to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and, and Ephesians 4, 30. And this should, be, this should be the nail in the coffin right here. But um, we do have some out here that are very hard-headed, prideful folks out here that think they've got it all figured out. And uh, after only being out of their old denomination for about a year or two, sometimes you just have to be quiet and listen. Okay, Ephesians 1, 13 says, In whom? Ye also trusted after that ye heard a word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. In chapter 4, verse 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, after reading these two verses, can anyone please tell me how in the world there is any chance of us not being spared? No, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of redemption, period. So, on to Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Because if those two verses in Ephesians weren't enough for you, let's see what this verse says. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. So, my first question for this verse is, what is severity? Well, it's the harshness of God's judgment. Being cut off from God is pretty serious. So notice the words fear, spare not thee, severity, harshness, goodness, if thou continue. Notice the condition here. Hey, the kingdom program was conditional. What about being cut off? I'm sorry, but the body of Christ cannot lose salvation, period. So please show me where Paul tells us that. Stay with me here. Hey, is God judging the world today? Absolutely not. Did he judge that olive tree and cut those branches off? Yes, he sure did in times past. This is absolutely not body of Christ doctrine. This doctrine is to those that were grafted into that kingdom program, period. You can go to Hebrews and Revelation and see people being cut off. What did Peter say back in Acts chapter 10, verse 35? I perceive in every nation that they fear God and worketh righteousness are accepted of him. This is not our language. We are not accepting by believing the gospel today and being placed. We, we are accepted. I'm sorry. We are accepted by believing the gospel today and being placed into the body of Christ. They were accepted by being grafted into a tree. So now on to verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again. Hey, they will be grafted in, in the future, ages to come. Verse 24 says, For if thou were cut off, 
the olive tree, which is wild by nature and work grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their into their own olive tree? Hey, the wild, the wild by nature is the Gentiles who had a knowledge of God through Israel. This is Israel's olive tree. It was a nation, the nation of Israel. Flip on over to Matthew chapter 21, verse 43. I'll read it for you real quick. Therefore, Say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Um, I'm sorry, I just I just read that twice. Jesus is speaking to an unbelieving Israel right here. So who brought forth the fruits thereof? The little flock. They are the good olive tree. So unbelieving Israel had it snatched from them and given to the little flock. That's the nation. So where were they when Jesus was talking to them in verse 21? We'll go back and read verse 1. They were on the Mount of Olives. Hmm, what a coincidence. The Sermon on the Mount was on the Mount of Olives. So just let the Bible say what it says and believe it. Now flip on over to Matthew chapter 25, verses 32 to 34. I'll go ahead and read those to you real quick. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom and prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hmm, from the foundation of the world. Who was it prepared for? That nation of Israel and anyone who blesses Israel. What do you think those Gentiles did? Well, they blessed Israel. So they get the kingdom promise also. How blind can you be to possibly not see this? Things different are not the same. So what do you think a person does when they see the possible loss of salvation in Romans chapter 11, and then we are told that we are sealed and cannot lose salvation? Well, they somehow think that they are the same because they claim you can't rightly divide Paul's epistles. Say what? Hey, it's pretty simple. This is why you must learn how to rightly divide. If you don't understand basic right division, you will continue to mix prophecy and mystery in Israel with the body of Christ. Hey, where is the kingdom going to be for these, for these people? What's well, going to be on earth? There were some blessed Gentiles that got grafted into that Jerusalem church in the book of Acts. Over 3,000 of them that were put into that church and some were Gentiles that were proselyted into that Jewish religion. Nobody from Ephesus that Paul was speaking to decided to stop worshiping Diana and went on, went on over there to Pentecost. They were worshiping a dead idol God. You see the difference of these Gentiles? Believing and unbelieving. It's that simple. So in conclusion, you had this good olive tree representing Israel, and throughout Scripture you have various trees that represent different aspects of Israel. An olive, fig, vine, and bramble representing apostate Israel. So the olive tree represents that nation's spiritual blessings and privilege. Some of those branches of the tree that were broken off because of unbelief. Romans chapter 9 lays it out clearly. In Romans eleven thirteen, Paul is talking about the Gentiles being brought unto a position of blessing not the body of Christ. In verses 20 through 24, this passage, contrary to common belief, is not talking about the church, the body of Christ, being cut off, as in loss of salvation. But rather, the warning in Romans eleven nineteen 19 through 22, is spoken to those Gentiles who do not become members of the body of Christ. The body of Christ are never grafted into a tree of Israel. So that wild olive tree representing Gentiles as a whole is brought into a position they've never had before. In time past, they, the Gentiles, had to come to God through Israel, and that will happen again in ages to come. So notice again what Paul wrote to us Gentiles. For through him, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access by one spirit unto the Father. That's Ephesians 2.18. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him. That's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. There is nothing about Israel's involvement. We have fellowship with God through Jesus Christ's finished cross work at Calvary. Jesus Christ alone is the mediator between God and man. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. 
Grace and peace.